Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where I believe we have a mission in progress. <laughs> Let's check. Um, yeah, uh, we're trying to dock up the Overkill Docker with the Moon Science Station. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and fly the Overkill Docker here. And I believe we need to do a rendezvous at this point, correct? Correct. We are correctly inclined. And we are actually on the way over there, so we just need to warp on over. We'll arrive around here. Excellent. And we're, of course, going to want to be in target retrograde. Eventually. Because we're going to need to kill our velocity. There's the station, about 30 kilometers away. Excellent. So we'll hop on over. And we're going to kill our relative velocity here in a bit. We'll go ahead and warp a little closer. Okay. The closest approach is supposed to be 0 0.2 kilometers. So we'll go ahead and start the burn here. And we'll just bring this down to a flat 0. Because we are missing a little bit here. So we're going to need to do a bit of a correction. All the way down to zero we go. Four meters per second. And... Perfect. Now we're going to go over towards target. And we'll burn on in. We don't need to burn in very quickly. That's for sure. Somewhere around... Five meters per second is more than enough. And then we will turn on our RCS, and I'm just going to adjust our actual directionality a tiny bit with RCS. There we go. And then we'll flop around to retrograde. Cool. So we're now about 130 meters out. And we'll need to cut our speed soon, which we will definitely do. We're now 70 meters out, and we'll cut our speed on down. About one meter per second. We're now about 45 meters out. Okay. Nice and close, that's for sure. Cool. I'm going to bring us a little closer here. 20 meters out. Okay. Let's go ahead and kill all of our relative velocity. I actually killed a little too much relative velocity there. Let's flip on around and burn towards target just a tiny amount. There. Okay, we'll swap over here. And we will go ahead and set this as the target. And then we're going to try to turn to the target. It's very slow with this thing. There's no doubt about that. So we will slowly head on over. We just have to get it approximately correct. To about right here. Okay. And then we'll head back. I want to make sure that the docking port is our target. Okay. And we should be able to head in very, very slowly here at about half a meter per second. I'm going to turn RCS on and adjust our actual velocity a little bit here. There we go. Okay. Honestly, from here, docking forces will probably take care of it. I believe that will be the case. So we'll just bring these on together. Yeah, docking forces should handle this slight angle disparity. And there we go. Perfect. Wonderful. So we are docked, and that performs our first rendezvous maneuver around the moon. Started constructing our first station around the moon. We performed a docking maneuver on the moon. On the moon? It was around the moon. But okay, sure. So that's all great. And we are, of course, going to move Thomlorf. From here to the science lab. Perfect. So Thomlorf and Bob are now both here. We could have them transmit some science, but there's no available in-range antenna on this vessel. So we're probably going to need to bring up a communications module. 
that's absolutely fine. But Valentina's job here is actually done. So all she's going to do is she is going to refuel. And she's going to head on back. Now we're going to need to eventually refuel this, but that's fine. We can definitely do that. So Valentina has filled up her gas and we are now going to head on out. So let's go ahead and undock this. There we go. And away goes Valentina. I need to try to remember. Let's see. H is the wrong way. Nope, not J. <laughs> N. There we go. N is the RCS direction I wanted. Perfect. Okay, so at this point, we need to return Valentina to Kerbin. And a burn right here is probably going to be about what we want. Yes. So back to Kerbin, Valentina goes. And she's going to go down to around 40 kilometers here. That's close enough for now. We can always adjust that later on. And we will just position for that burn, and then we'll go ahead and warp towards it. It's only a couple minutes away, so that's absolutely fine. Valentina has cleared the station now. Excellent. And we're going to want to burn this at T-15 seconds. This is going to be a pure prograde burn, so we might as well just stick prograde and warp to T-15. And off we go. Cool. And there goes the station. See ya, station. It was nice knowing ya. Valentina's delivery service is getting a lot of use. There's no doubt about that. Like, it's a good thing she decided to start this business. Because, uh, yikes. The lack of alarm clocks in the Kerbal Space Program definitely could have been a problem otherwise. Okay, so we're going to just try to hit this node a little bit more precisely here for the last little bit. Five meters per second to go. Good enough. 0 0.2 meters per second. Oh yeah, that's fine. So, I mean, ignore the flashing here. That's That's not going to be a thing. This is all, like, future projections. So we're going to go ahead and warp to Moon Escape, which will be around here in an hour. And off we go. Goodbye, Moon. Valentina is headed home. And honestly, we can probably bring back this whole thing. We don't need to use this decoupler. So our next mission, of course, will be to come over to Kerbin here. And we're going to do a bit of a radial retrograde burn about here. So a retrograde burn, and then we bring that down, and then we radial burn the periapsis back up to around 40 kilometers. It's a fairly delta V intensive burn, but we've got plenty. So this will do absolutely fine. In fact, we probably don't need to be at 40 kilometers here. Honestly, 20 should be sufficient. So that's probably more than fine. So we'll align for that, and then we will warp on over towards that burn. And we have enough for a re-entry burn, and maybe even a landing burn, if we decide to. Hello, Kerbin. Okay, so this is going to be burned at T-32.5 seconds. So we'll go ahead and warp towards that. Technically, we're in Atmo now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and burn this. And we're going to bleed off a bunch of speed. This here is actually, I think, irrelevant. I didn't expect this to dip into atmosphere, but it's okay. We're just doing a bit of a re-entry burn here. And honestly, we can just continue to uh, burn pure retrograde for the time being. Until such a time as uh, 
we have 10 seconds left in our in our tank here. So that'll be just fine. We are burning almost entirely off of the apoapsis at this time, although time to periapsis is increasing. So I'm going to cut the burn for a moment here. We're definitely moving pretty quick. There's no doubt about that. Okay, we need to continue to burn. We absolutely need to continue to burn. This is a quick, quick re-entry. That's for sure. However, our apoapsis has dropped down nicely. We're going to keep 10 seconds of burn left in the tank as a margin. Not that I expect to need it. So we'll cut our burn now. And we are currently about 40 kilometers up, and we are still moving at almost orbital speeds here. But we're absolutely fine. We're bleeding off a lot of speed here, but I don't expect to see major heating issues. If we have major heating issues, we can always decouple. It's not a big deal. We could also burn RCS if we really wanted to. Like this. So, you can't really see it there, but we are burning retrograde with the RCS. And that's actually slowing us down a lot. Well, actually it's the atmosphere. It's not really the RCS. The RCS is helping a little bit, I suppose. Oh, we did perform a crew transfer. That's true. We did do that. We've got plenty of monoprop, so this is fine. And yeah, our speed is completely okay at this point. I'm not concerned about this at all. RCS doesn't need to be on anymore. That's for sure. I don't think it really needed to be on in the first place. But we'll just go ahead and head on down here. We're at 1.2 kilometers per second and 22 kilometers up. Like, this is not a problem. It was definitely a speedy re-entry, but that's okay. We're going to be able to throw out our drogue shoots very, very soon here. So right now. And then our main shoots will follow shortly thereafter. And at this point, we can go ahead and physics warp. Completely fine. SAS can go off. We do not need it. And we probably don't need to propulsively land here. I think we're completely fine not to. But yeah, that worked very well. So, Valentina is home now. There's a drogue chute deploying. And the main. Yeah, we're absolutely fine as far as altitude goes. So, we can just chill here for the moment. Excellent. Or, not altitude. We're absolutely fine as, as far as velocity goes. We don't need to burn anything at all here to land. So, we're not going to. We're just going to splash on down. One hundred meters to go, and sploosh. Fantastic. We may as well grab a surface sample since we apparently have a tiny amount of science we can get from that. There we go. And we will go ahead and recover that. Fantastic. I also want to make a quick change at the Space Center as long as we're here. Um... There is a mod that I've been running this whole time that I haven't really utilized, and I probably should. And specifically, I need to try to remember where to see it. Let's see, that's toolbar controller there. Uh, 4KSP is the one that I wanted to activate here. I don't believe it's any of these, though. I mean, that's Eve, obviously. Yeah, I'm not sure it's, it's not popping up. Maybe it's out of date or something. I'm not sure. But uh, I want to up to increase the size of some of the map elements, and that's what that mod is for. Sadly, it's not popping up here. I'll have to check to see if there's an update to it available. But for now, we do need to hop into the mission control and see what we want to do next. Docking two vessels on or around Minmus. Okay. I mean, we could definitely do that. I think for now, though, what we really want to do is we want to send a 
science module up to the moon station. So to that end, we will do like the Probodobodyne Octo. We'll give it some photovoltaic panels. This should not need any sort of a reaction wheel. Uh, we could put in like just some tiny RCS. This is not tiny. Let's see here, RCS. Okay, so that's not tiny either. That's really not tiny. That's also not tiny. <laughs> I'm looking for smaller tanks. That's a bit more like it. Okay, so we could put an RCS tank there and then we can put some RCS thruster blocks here. And honestly, that's gonna mostly get us to where we wanna go. I am going to put in a teeny tiny little fuel tank here. It doesn't need to be much. And that would be like, these are still having the RCS search, but we would want like just a T100 would be too big. Do we have anything smaller? I mean, this is obviously bigger. Oscar A, yes, this guy. It barely has anything there, but we also want to take just some teeny tiny ant engines and we'll put those in, not mounted like this. Uh, I was expecting them to be more like the sparks or like the thuds. I mean, the thuds are too big, obviously, but where they'd be radially mounted, but pointing down. Unfortunately, they are apparently not that. I mean, we could rotate them to be that or just mount them over here. But I want to put a docking port here. And I want on this side to put a relay antenna. So it would be something like this on this side. And we'd probably want to have a battery on here as well. Just a small battery like that. And then we want a very, very small set of engines, but I also want a docking port. Here. So the idea would be that this docks in this way to the station. That would be the overall concept. I mean, just the RCS thrusters might be enough. Yeah, it, it doesn't show up in, in Kerbal Engineer. Just the RCS thrusters might be enough if we ditched the Oscar A fuel tank. It's a possibility, but I definitely was hoping to put in some radially mounted engines. Some very tiny ones, to be sure, but radially mounted engines nonetheless. I mean, we could just simply do this and then have them slightly moved out. That is an option. We'd have to, like, turn off snapping and have them just moved to be something like this. And maybe even moved up a little bit. Kind of like that. In theory. The other thing we could do is mount them opposite. So we would grab the place tool here and grab just the ants and mount them instead of that, mount them this way. Put them, like, here. Move the RCS thruster blocks to be, like, here. Then move this out slightly. Something kind of like that. And it does actually kind of look like they're attached. I don't hate this. Because this way, when it's docked, the engines aren't pointing right at the station. It does mean that we're going to have to remember that we're retrograde on everything. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting for sure. We're going to have to be pointing the opposite direction that we're used to. We could mount the Octo upside down to compensate for that. But I don't think that's a great idea. So at this point, we would then put in a decoupler. And like a TD-06 here would be fine. Decoupler would go there. And then we would just put a very, very small fuel tank. I, I would like a fuel adapter up to like a uh, 1.5 meter. These fuel adapters are, that's not what I wanted to do. We sorted by, and I didn't want to do that necessarily. I don't think we have a fuel adapter for this size. 
which is a little bit sad, but we could do like an A10 adapter like this. It's not going to have fuel in it, but that's, I guess, okay. And then we'd have like a uh, T400. Well, really, from here, what we could do is put in a fuel tank adapter like this. And then I think we need another one like that. And then just like a single big orange tank. So we'd use, not this guy, we would use sorted by mass and I, I don't like it. Things are not where I'm used to them being. Okay, uh, that's the Rocket Max 32. This is the Jumbo 64. Okay, so something like that. And then a mainsail. Like, this is pretty overkill. There's no doubt about it. And we may want to put this in a fairing. That may be a thing that we want to do. This would honestly get us there. This would only have 17 seconds of burn. Um, let's see, what, what would that DV be? Over the moon? 405 meters per second. But stage zero would be four meters per second from stage two. Um, I, I feel like that's not accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think that 405 is probably fairly accurate. What are ants actually? Uh, ants are about four times as efficient in vacuum as they are at sea level. Okay, so we should assume that this is probably going to be like 405 total meters per second. So this is obviously way too much power. We can thrust limit this back. And that's 1.49. We'd want to thrust limit this back to be 1.6 is the target that I like to shoot for. So 60% thrust should be more than good. Let's go ahead and put this in a fairing. I think that'll be for the best. And we'll put the fairing down here. So we'll go ahead and do a 1.5 meter fairing, I think. Or maybe this fairing? Yes, this fairing. Okay. And we do have our antenna. That is good. And the fairing would just go something like that. Now the question is, it, it looks so silly how it uh, narrows down here and then widens back out, but it is what it is. The question then becomes, do we feel like we need aerodynamics? Like, do we feel like a tail fin set is needed here? I think the answer is possibly. I mean, if we were to put in the tail set, the tail fin set here, this would be probably a little awkward, but it should be manageable. Now, the uh, reaction wheel up here is not great. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And it's not going to be capable of turning this very well, but... This stage will get burned out pretty quickly. Now, 4,000 meters per second here. Interesting. If we go to Kerbin, why is this reporting that we have one meter per second? I think KER is wrong about that. Pretty sure. Oh, we turn off the RCS. There, that would help. So that's more accurate. 263 delta V here. Okay, that should be enough in theory. Like, this should be more than enough. Cool. So go ahead and save this. I mean, if we end up attaching this whole thing, that would be, um, yikes. And that would indicate how much overkill this is. But we'll call this the comms module. And we'll go ahead and save that. And let's launch it. We're not going to get it all the way there this episode, but we can certainly get it into orbit. So let's go ahead and do that. Docking this whole thing would be unwieldy, <laughs> that's for sure. We may have to expend some extra fuel here, I don't know. This would also work as a refueling mission, I suppose, if we docked this whole thing. But we'll see how much Delta V we end up having. I think we'll have plenty, like, this is so much overkill here. I really probably should have used the uh, T-800s and a swivel. But here we are. And off we go. Okay, let's head on over. 
We can't actually lock prograde with the octo, so that's exciting. We can't really lock anything, but we don't need to. So we'll just head on over here, and we should hop into maneuver node, or maneuver mode rather, so that we can see our apoapsis. Our fairing will protect any of our delicate electronics here if we get going too quickly. I'm not too concerned about that. Which we are going to get going fairly quickly. There's no doubt about it. 12 kilometer apoapsis at this time. And we're starting to shift over to getting mostly horizontal speed. 20 kilometer apoapsis. And we're just going to continue heading approximately towards the horizon here. We're starting to get some pretty significant arrow resistance to continuing to pitch over. Or rather, we don't pitch over. We yaw over. But that's okay. 40 kilometer apoapsis. And we're definitely moving pretty quick. But we're also going up through the atmosphere quite quickly. It's thinning out at this point. And we're just going to hop on over to the horizon. There we go. And we'll chill here. Okay. 80 kilometer apoapsis. And we're going to need very little delta V at this point to get into orbit. So, yeah, that seems pretty decent. Cool. Cool. And we'll just continue to drift here for a bit. 45 kilometers means that I'm not yet ready to jettison the fairing, but we will do that soon. And we'll just hold here if we can turn back. It's going to be a very minor burn to get us into orbit, and we're going to have most of the fuel left in this still. Uh, well, not most of it. We're going to have like... 2k meters per second, though, so more than enough, for sure. But not really enough to justify bringing this, I think. Okay, we can now ditch the fairing, and so we shall. And we're just going to try to hold this maneuver position for the moment. Cool. Atmosphere is starting to get very, very thin at this point. We have lost a little bit of altitude in our apoapsis, but that's completely to be expected. And we're going to dip out of the atmosphere here in just a moment. We're attempting to head on over towards that prograde marker a little bit. Okay, we're heading out of Atmo now. And we'll go ahead and warp forward until T minus five seconds. And we'll burn off a little bit more. We can continue to warp. Okay. And we're going to burn right about... Now. Cool. So we're just watching the periapsis here. And good enough. We are in orbit. Perfect. And then we will, of course, head off to the moon. We need to get this communications module up there. And we've definitely got more than enough Delta V to do it. So let's go ahead and work on that in the next episode. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.